Nothing's ever simple, right? No, nothing in football is ever simple. Nothing's ever easy. But I really think that the, the the recipe to beating the Kansas City Chiefs, it's certainly it's a lot easier to say than do. But Larry, Larry, I don't see how this team wins. I really don't. I don't see how the Kansas City Chiefs beat the 49ers without either a monster performance from Travis Kelsey or the type of defensive evening that leaves Kyle Shanahan humiliated. Like, you, you reached the Super Bowl and you only scored 13 points. Like, Kansas City's defense either comes out with a pocket full of kryptonite that makes everybody go, holy mackerel, or Travis Kelsey has a monster afternoon and I don't. I really don't see the path to victory for the Chiefs without one of those two things happening. Other things can happen, and they can still get into the win column. But one of those two things is happening for the Chiefs to win this game. Travis Kelsey goes MVP of the game level bonkers, and that means Mahomes played well, obviously. Or Kansas City's defense has a straight up, nobody expected that. Steve Spagnuolo is a goddamn genius who deserves a bust in the pro football hall of fame someday as a defensive coordinator level defensive effort. That's how the chiefs are going to win this game. I can think of about 30 different ways. The 49ers might be able to win this game. I feel like the chiefs got <clears throat> two paths basically. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I watched, um, I spent last night watching chiefs Ravens and you know, the one thing about it, Damon is that Kansas city used to be, they have everything right. They've got, you know, all kinds of different weapons and they're, they, they came out with a very high percentage short passing game, just little releases off the line of scrimmage to Kelsey, little tosses in the flat to, to Pacheco, no taking, no chances, giving, um, Baltimore, no chances to go after Mahomes. Very, very conservative. Um, and they also went big personnel against Buffalo where they put three tight ends on the field and just pounded the run. And with the way the Niners did not defend the run in the playoff games before, um, I think there's a very good chance that they see the same kind of thing, which is high percentage stuff underneath, real close to the line of scrimmage, you know, dink and dunk, um, Isaiah Pacheco, third down, Mahomes runs. The Here's the thing. Kansas City has eight straight. Um, they've scored eight straight off first offensive possessions. So that's, you know, they score. They score early, and they're looking for Kelsey in the red zone. And they want a short passing game. Um, and they come out and they just want zero negative plays. I mean, that's really it. They they want zero negative plays. And then they have some guys on defense that can really make plays. So it's a it's it's a um, you know, it's a really, really good football team. And they're very conservative. And then their defense has only allowed seven points per game in the playoffs. So seven points allowed per game in the playoffs in the second half. So their defense shuts shuts it down. And then they're leaning on Mahomes to convert third downs with his legs. And they're running Pacheco uh, behind a good interior offensive line. And they're just dumping it short, real short. I mean, just... Kelsey on a two yard pop, you know, Rasheed Rice on a three yard pop. And so that's kind of what they're, I think that what they're going to do, they're, they're going to come out. Said Patrick Mahomes, dink and dunk quarterback, Larry. Yeah. No, I mean, we all know he's got big skills, but he doesn't have big weapons and they've dialed down their offense. And basically they just are going to come out and they're going to say, look, we're not going to take any chances. We're going to have zero negative plays. We're going to let you make negative plays. And then we've got defensive playmakers. Now, they don't have Charles Menehue, but they do have Chris Jones. They do have Carl Loftus. They do have Trent McDuffie. They do have Legereus Sneed. All of their guys made big plays well, in Justin this game. Reed is, Justin Reed. Justin is Reed. Reed. He, he's a Stanford guy, for those of you who remember that name from when he was down on the farm. Um, he's, you know, you want, you want a smart safety. 
and they've got one. Um, it makes that 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 secondary of Kansas City with Snead and McDuffie a lot more dangerous than their numbers actually look, Larry. They don't turn the ball over an awful lot, but they do a great job straight up defending their guys. The defensive line absolutely got its push in Buffalo and in Baltimore. You can expect them to be better than advertised, probably in the Super Bowl as well. Um, it's uh, it's it's going to be a hell of a matchup. It really is. But I do think that the 49ers just, when it comes to what can your offense do, as opposed to what can the offense of the Kansas City Chiefs do with the, you know, the, the best race car driver out there is Patrick Mahomes. But I do think the better race car is the San Francisco 49ers. So can a driver's instincts beat the better machine is kind of the race that these two teams are running against each other in the Super Bowl. I think an early indicator, Larry, is that you're just going to know whether or not this 49ers team is in this game this afternoon. First couple of drives. I mean, just our plays coming easy. Is the running game popping? Is McCaffrey falling forward for not just a couple yard gain, but like a seven yard gain? Is it is it coming naturally to the Niners? Does it look in rhythm early? If it does, I think that they can outscore the Chiefs in this game and end up winning it. I, I, I agree. Know. I do agree. I mean, I think the 49ers have to, um, you know, I mean, get a lead and, you know, play from a lead. I mean, that's the that's the big, big one, I think, is that don't play from behind against Kansas City. Get a lead. I think they need um, the ball first, Larry. I do. Get the... I, I mean, they're not going to take it first. I mean, that there's no question about it. They they don't take it first. Uh, they they're going to defer to the second half. It's what Kyle does. He's what he's it's what he's comfortable with. I I kind of agree with you, but um, you know, that's not typically what he does or what he's going to do. But you know what? I it just Mahomes threw 14 interceptions this year, and if you go look at at Kansas City, um, you know they 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 lost some games this year. They lost games when they fell behind. Uh, they lost games when they failed to score. Kansas City's ten and zero when they score twenty one points or more, but they're oh they they got zero wins all year when they failed to score twenty one. So if you can keep them down offensively, um, and and make them turn it over a little bit, I mean, as I said, Mahomes struggled. He had you know their tackles really struggled. It's Donovan Smith against Chase Young. It's Nick Bosa against Juwan Taylor. Juwan Taylor led the NFL this year with twenty. Uh, penalties seven more than any other player. I think there's a very good chance that that um, both the Niner defensive ends win and put pressure on Mahomes. It's weird though, you know. Juwan Taylor isn't a bad player. He's just a player with a lot of penalties. He's not bad, Larry. No, he's not. He just is a penalty laden player. I mean, but he's not bad at it. It's really weird. So. That's a matchup that Nick Bosa, if he wins and takes advantage of, and he's getting home to Patrick Mahomes. Look, if the 49ers defense is getting home on Patrick Mahomes, if at any point in time you're talking to your friends during the Super Bowl, like, man, Mahomes got no time today. He's just so uncomfortable back there. Things are going incredibly well for the San Francisco 49ers. It's hard to put pressure on Mahomes or even get home on him in a playoff game. So if his tackles were that bad, we would know it, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, well, they're, they're, you know, this has been the weakness for them this year, um, you know, but they they also sacked the quarterback. I think they've got the third, second or third most sacks in the league, so you don't want to fall behind, you know. I mean, you don't want to get into a situation where Chris Jones is just dominating you, um, and that's that's a tough one because Jones has been really, really good. So they just have to figure out a way to get off to a better start Kansas City's not a perfect football team. They're really not. I mean, if you if you look at their numbers, Damon, they're not a perfect football team this year. This is not a vintage Chiefs offense. Um, Mahomes has been pretty ordinary, but he's been really good in the playoffs. And if you watch the way Reed's calling it, um, you know they're they're uh, they're very very conservative. They're they they're not going. Here's the thing: they're coming out in this mode of we've been here before. We're not nervous. We have a quarterback who's not nervous, but we're not going to take any chances at all. We're going to throw it short. You're not going to get turnovers. You're not going to get sacks. We're going to get to third down. We're going to run Mahomes or Pacheco. We're going to stay on the field. We're going to score first, 
And then we're going to play really, really good defense. I mean, they shut out Baltimore on their home field in the second half of that game for the most part. I mean, I think Baltimore got a field goal. Um, but, but then when you look at Kansas City, they're 15th in points per game. They score 21.8 points per game, where the Niners are third in the NFL. The Niners score almost 29 a game. So, And then the other thing that jumps out is the Chiefs are 17th against the run. So they've given up 113 yards on the ground. To me, it's a you got the best running back in football, and the Chiefs' pass D is number four. Their total D is number two, but their run D is number 17. Run the freaking ball at them. And then the other key is somehow if you can get a lead, then you got a shot at, uh, at uh, Mahomes taking more chances, and if he takes more chances – the odds are he'll turn it over. The Niners are fifth in the NFL at plus 10 in turnovers. The Chiefs are 28th in the NFL at minus 11 in turnover differential, which is, I think, a big part of why Reed is kind of running the plan that he's running right now is that he knows that his team can turn it over, especially if they fall behind. So he's being real, real conservative at the beginning of games. I think that there's a little bit of that element of doubt in there, like you're talking about. I also think he's a smart coach who knows I got the right defense to win this football game. And when you got a defense that wins football games, I think you're just smart coaches are are predisposed to taking fewer chances, even if Patrick Mahomes is the guy taking that chance for you. You just you get more conservative when you have a defense to lean on. And like you said, it's it's kind of a pedestrian Chiefs offense that shows up in the Super Bowl with the best defense the Kansas City Chiefs have had in the Andy Reid era, without a doubt, and they have been even better in the postseason than they were in the regular season. The Chiefs defense gave up 17.3 points per game in the regular season and in the postseason where they played three games already, only 13.7 points per game given up by the Kansas City defense. Miami was held to seven. Buffalo got off with 24, but Baltimore was held to just 10 points at home in the AFC championship game. So it's a really good defense and getting conservative and letting the defense sort of dictate the afternoon and not putting them in any sort of bad position is, is the way that the Kansas City Chiefs have reached the Super Bowl. It's a formula that's been less razzle-dazzle for them than in the past, but has certainly worked to great effect. Now, what you don't want to have happen is for Patrick Mahomes to look at the 49ers jerseys and just think hot supper. And the last time Patrick Mahomes played the 49ers, he basically, he destroyed them. Mahomes torched the Niners the last time that they met throwing for 423 yards and three touchdowns in a 44, 23 win in Santa Clara, his plus 0.701 EPA expected points added was the single highest EPA allowed to any quarterback that the 49ers faced over the last three seasons. So Patrick Mahomes, he sees 49ers jerseys and he's like, yeah, I like this. I mean, he just, he plays really, really well against the 49ers and you know, is that independent of the talent around him? No, it never is. But some guys, Again, they see that jersey, they play better. It's just how it goes. And that's how the Niners do sort of trigger Mahomes. So then I expect Mahomes to play well. Now it's, does Travis Kelsey have a monster game? Or does that Kansas City defense really, you know, bear its teeth and the 49ers are having trouble scratching together more than 17 points in this game? 